Boom blast. And we are live. This is the wrap it up on blast raps post game show as your Toronto Raptors win again. Raptors win their eighth game in a row. The Raptors win their 10th game on the road this season to improve to 10 and two on the road this season. They're now an NBA best 20 and four, the best start in franchise history. I know it's the Cavs. I know the Cavs are not a good team, but night after night, there's still enough positives to take away from what this Toronto Raptors team is doing that as Raptors fans, you should be very encouraged. This was a game that was super ugly, but you know, they still get the win. There's still enough. You still see enough from Kawhi. You still see enough from, you know, a guy like Pascal who continues to flourish and grow. And we watch the glow up. And you know what? I'm happy you guys are here to join me again on what we call the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps postgame show. My name, if you don't know, is Sheldon Alexander. And as always, thank you for the people joining me live on Twitter at Shell Alexander. Click on that feed. You will get into Periscope. And there's a comment box on the side where you can join in, ask questions, comments, let me know what you think of the game, how the Raptors did, how much you love Kawhi Leonard in a Raptors uniform. Brampton, maybe you want to show some love to Brampton. Brampton stand up. Tristan did play well in this game. But whatever it is that you want to say, let me know. Again, always live after every game on Twitter at Shell Alexander or Join in on Instagram. Instagram is a separate feed where I take a lot of questions and comments off there as well, live during the show. And yeah, especially on a game like this, I'm here. I want to talk with you, the fans, and, and find out what you guys are thinking and how you feel about this game. And as always, if you don't catch us live after the show, it becomes a podcast. You can find us on Apple, on iTunes, sorry, Apple iTunes. Or you can find us on SoundCloud, Google Play, just search On Blast Podcast. It ends up being up there maybe a couple hours after we go live. Uh, and then also you can find us on YouTube. Shout out to all the people on YouTube. Another big week there in the YouTube group. And the chats on the YouTube group, the comments are starting to build. And that's really what we're building here. We're trying to build a community for Raptors fans to talk and discuss about the best team in the NBA because that best team is here in Toronto. So again, right off the bat, Raptors win, Raptors win, Raptors win. 106-95 over the Cleveland Cavaliers improved to 20 and 4 on the season. You heard them talk about it during the broadcast. This is the fastest ever that a Raptors team has gotten to 20 wins in a season. 20 and 4, they are the best team in the league. Another thing I want to bring up kind of early here is a lot of talk about what happened and what last game meant in terms of beating the Warriors. Well, as I said, I thought the Golden State Warriors were ducking the Raptors, and so that's why Steph Curry didn't play. Well, Steph Curry played tonight for the Golden State Warriors, and they took an L to the Detroit Pistons. So just just saying, just going to throw that out there for all the people talking about, oh, well, what would have happened if... If Steph Curry played in that game against the Raptors, well, Steph Curry played tonight and they lost to the Pistons. So whatever, you can only play who's in front of you. And tonight, the Toronto Raptors played against the Cleveland Cavaliers, who off the top, I'll say, they're not a good team, right? We know that. The Cavs are rebuilding, despite what Mr. Brampton himself, Tristan Thompson said to start the season, the East does not go through the Cleveland Cavaliers, right? So the way that this game started, we found out Kyle Lowry wasn't going to play tonight, which I think was a very smart decision by the Toronto Raptors, right? Kyle Lowry, we know that they need to pace Kyle Lowry's minutes during the season, especially if you want him to be running on all cylinders come playoff time. So Kyle Lowry gets a rest. Kyle Lowry also has been picking up a lot of the load, seeing as there's been games where Kawhi Leonard was resting on the second night of back-to-backs, you know, especially in big-time games lately. The minutes have been up for both Kyle Lowry and Kawhi Leonard in both of those for both of those guys, right? We've seen the minutes go up for both of those guys as of late. And it's a thing where if you can get Kyle Lowry the rest, you do it, right? Nothing wrong with that. And again, you're playing the Cavs. So Fred Van Fleet got the start. Fred's third start of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Kyle also out with back soreness, right? Which is something that you wanna 
you want to take your time with. You want to give them the time off. But also you know that you got a big week ahead. Denver comes into Toronto on Monday night. And then Wednesday, you got a big showdown against Philly. And you know Kyle Lowry wants to play and be good to go for that Philly game, right? So I'm totally cool with Kyle Lowry resting. No problem at all. Interesting thing with Kyle Lowry out, Danny Green becomes the only Raptor to start in every single game this season. Tonight, joining Danny Green in the starting lineup, you got Fred, you got Kawhi, Pascal, and Serge Ibaka. This Cavs team is super weird, right? Like, it's weird to think that when you look at their lineup and they started rookie Colin Sexton, uh, Rodney Hood, George Hill, Seti Osman, and Tristan Thompson. It's so weird to watch this Cavs team and realize that they basically removed LeBron James and now they're one of the worst teams in the league. With LeBron James, they were in the NBA Finals. Remove LeBron James, they're one of the worst teams in the league. Now, I know you're going to say, oh, well, Kevin Love's not there too. True. I'll give you that. But does Kevin Love even make this team an eighth seed? Does Kevin Love, like, where? how much better does Kevin Love make this team? I don't know. Also, too, if you go back to the years with LeBron, Kevin Love was getting hurt during the season all the time anyways, if we're really going to keep it 100, right? Kevin Love was consistently getting hurt as well. So, I don't know. Anyways, to the actual game. Raptors came out, and they were struggling early. And it was very apparent in the first quarter to me that this was, you know, I've, I've been talking about this narrative from the start of the season that I feel that Kyle Lowry is the most important player on this team. Now, I'm not going to get into breaking down the definition of what's valuable and who's the best player and all that. Kawhi is obviously the best player. The most important player is Kyle Lowry because what Kyle Lowry means to the rest of the guys not named Kawhi Leonard in terms of getting their offense going. And we saw that in this first quarter, right? The first quarter was sluggish. I mean, you can't really get too mad because you know there's going to be some kind of hangover coming off an emotional victory, despite it being the regular season. But the Raptors coming off a very big overtime win in uh, or against the Warriors, there was a bit of a letdown to start this game against the Cavs, right? Raptors struggled. No Kyle. You have Fred in the starting lineup. But the thing is, with Fred starting, he's not really used to playing minutes with Danny Greed and Kawhi, right? Like, Fred doesn't get that many minutes with those guys. So there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment there. Plus, also, they're just super sluggish, you know? And the Cavs, the Cavs got blown out in their last game. But they came out with a lot of energy. And the Raptors just couldn't get anything going. They were down early. And they couldn't really find their offense. And it was it was very odd, right? Because not only is the starting lineup different, but now you're taking Freddie out of the bench unit. And the bench unit was also a little bit off. So things were really weird. It was 21-21 after one quarter. And I said, they, they're missing Kyle Lowry. And you have to remember... Kyle Lowry, yes, leads the NBA in assists, but also Kyle Lowry, the relationship that he has built with Serge Ibaka, right? That two-man game that those guys get. It's just such a different dynamic with Kyle not there, and you could tell that it's taken him, what, how many years to figure out that dynamic? How Serge wants the ball, that bounce pass as he's rolling to the basket. What spot Serge wants the ball in, right? Because Serge is either taking it all the way or he's stopping at the elbow, to knock down that jumper. These are things that take a little while to develop that chemistry with Serge Ibaka. And we kind of saw that, you know, Freddie didn't have it going early. You know, it was kind of weird. And you got to get used to, again, if Kyle's not used to playing with Danny Green and uh, Kawhi Leonard yet, obviously it's gonna it's not going to happen in the first quarter for Fred Van Fleet either, right? So it's no shade at all. It's just a matter of, hey, they came out the gates stumbling a little bit right and the raptors the raptors now it was one of those things where again you you wonder what's going on with the bench where i'm talking about individually right og still kind of been up and down cj miles continues to struggle and not hit shots and the the bench at one point they came out and they were missing i think they missed like six straight shots in a row just not a good look at all and it was weird right because we haven't seen a Raptors team, the Raptors look like that so far this season, right? And again, I'm going to point it to Kyle Lowry, the difference with Kyle Lowry and without Kyle Lowry, right? Because we got to remember, this Toronto Raptors team came into this game 
as a number one team in the NBA in terms of field goal percentage, right? They moved ahead of Golden State after their performance head-to-head on Thursday night. The Raptors were the number one team in the NBA in field goal percentage. And without Kyle Lowry, they only scored 21 points in the first quarter. How many times do you think the Raptors have scored, you know, less than 25 or less than 30 in the first quarter this season, right? It was just a little, it was a little odd to see, right? The Raptors shot 37% from the floor in that first quarter as well. 37%. That's terrible. Not a good look at all. But here's one of those classic narratives that you hear, you know, those, those like old wise sayings that you hear basketball vets or basketball lifers say, right? And it's sometimes when you're on the road, sometimes when your team doesn't have it going or things are struggling because your bench players don't play well on the road. Sometimes you just need your best players to be your best players and carry you through, right? And Nick Nurse, again, knowing that because his lineup's going to be a little bit altered, he brings back Kawhi Leonard with the bench to start the second quarter. And the hope is that Kawhi can get things going and be the featured offensive guy with that second unit who might struggle to score in certain spots, especially without Freddie Van Fleet, right? Kawhi comes in. Raptors start the second quarter one for eight from the floor. CJ Miles still can't buy a shot. It's really weird, right? Because you're looking and you're thinking, okay, this is really where they miss Kyle Lowry. And I talked about this a little bit in the last game where they played Golden State, but it's the little things that Kyle Lowry does, right? If the if the offense is struggling, Kyle will quickly go to the two-man game, get Serge an easy basket at the rim. Or as I said before, he'll do the little Chauncey Billups thing, right? Whereas you'll get in the lane, you'll lean into the defender and force the ref to call a foul so that you can go to the line, get some easy free throws, put some points on the board for your team and get that momentum going a little bit, right? Like, especially when you're struggling to see the ball go through the basket, Kyle Lowry knows how to do that for his team. It's those little things. It's not going to show up in a box score, but it's the little things, the little vet plays that help this team when they're struggling. Another thing that helps this team when they're struggling, Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam was cooking again, and we talk about the glow up of Pascal, right? And you're seeing his game, and they talked a bit about as as the season progresses, the scouting report's going to get out, right? Pascal's spin move is going to be a thing that teams are going to be waiting for, defenders are going to be waiting for. And you still see him get the the spin move going once in a while, right? And it's still working. You still got to be able to stop it. I mean, you might know that D. Wade was going to drive every time he's going right and pull up every time he's going left, but you still got to stop it. Pascal's coming down with the spin move, and there's a play where it looked like the defender was readying for the spin move, and he just continued with his left hand and finished the lefty lay-in. That, to me, is the next level, right? Because any any high school coach will tell you, you got the move, and then you got your counter move. More than that is a little too much, right? Once you got the move and the counter move, you're gravy. I remember my grade 10 coach, Mr. Lilico, shout out to Northern. That was the thing. He would always talk about three dribbles. You got your move, you got your counter move, and if you need that third dribble, you better be shooting it or passing it because you're dribbling too much, right? <laughs> but... The point remains, Pascal's development continues to improve. It's so crazy. His game is so smooth. He's so active. The advantage that he gives them when he's able to grab the ball and start the break, and also in a game where you're without Kyle Lowry, meaning you're without one of your ball handlers, Pascal has to pick up that slack as well because now he's another playmaker. He has more chances to create plays, and he did that tonight, right? Pascal with 15 points, 15 rebounds, and five, or sorry, 15 points, five rebounds, pardon me, five rebounds and five assists. He's just all over the place, man. Pascal Siakam, it's it's becoming a, a nightly thing where I'm getting used to it now. I'm getting used to it. I'm expecting to see him have a good night, night after night. And regardless of the scouting report getting out there, you still can't beat effort. Effort will get you a long way in the NBA. And I know that sounds kind of stupid, but trust me, like just watch how many buckets this guy gets, how many plays he makes just off of effort and outworking his defender down the floor, right? Great get for the Raptors. 
Raptors doing work with Pascal there. And really, though, the thing that changed in the second quarter was Kawhi Leonard just decided, okay, get out of my way. Let me go. Freddie and Kawhi check back into the game. Freddie hit the two-man game with Surge. Kawhi hits a three. And Kawhi just starts, he just starts cooking. And at that point, it's like, I feel like there's a sigh of relief. There's no chance, like, nobody's thinking, oh, no, we might lose this game anymore. Or not that people thought that, but that thought doesn't even enter your mind when you just watch Kawhi go on these personal runs where, you know, the Raptors went on a 15-3 run. Kawhi had 13 points in the second quarter. And that's, like, deflating for the other team. But also, I bet you it gives Nick Nurse a sigh of relief, right? If there's any questions about oh no, we, maybe we shouldn't have rested Kyle, or maybe you know we could be in some form of trouble. It's like, no, no, this is still going to be a 10-point victory at the end of the day. Kawhi's got it covered. You can't stop it, right? I'm going to go to the chat here. I see some comments. Yes. <laughs> yes, Bev. Shout out Northern for sure, indeed. Um, I see we can't be blowing big leads like that. Here's the thing, right? The leads, I'm not as worried about the blowing the leads as a lot of people are because I just think that I just think that the NBA is so different now. They talk about it on the broadcast and it's not just it's not hyperbole. I think it's real. The pace of play in the game right now is so different. There's just so many more uh possessions available and with people just shooting more threes, well, what does that mean? It means that more people are going to be able to get back into games faster, right? Teams aren't walking the ball up the floor anymore, right? Teams are just firing threes with no regard. You would see, you would almost laugh at those heat check guys who would shoot a three, miss it, get it back, and shoot it again. But now that's like a regular occurrence that we see in the NBA. The game has just changed so much. Things are so different that, like, it's not even a 10-point lead isn't anything, right? The Raptors were up, I think, 18 at one point, and then, boom, it got down to 10. It's just the way that the game is played now. It's at such a faster pace. Teams shoot so many more threes. Possessions are so much faster that, hey, a team hits two threes and gets another stop. They hit another three. That's a 9-0 run. And that can happen in like a minute. So I'm not, I'm not as worried in it as, the, as a lot of people are in terms of the Raptors blowing leads because I just think that's just the way the NBA is played now. The possessions are so quick. As soon as you let up, like, if you let up for a bit, the, the opposing team's able to get out on a run. So I don't think this is a Raptors problem by any stretch of the imagination. I just think that this is a change in the way that the game is played. And also, I mean, to me, the big lesson here, right? We keep talking about the Raptors blowing leads, but they're still winning in the games. And at the end of the day, the most important part is, okay, can you handle the runs that these other teams make? Because you're not going to win every game by 20 points, right? Like, maybe we saw that when what? Like, Golden State that year, they won 73 or whatever they won that year, right? They were winning a lot of games by double digits. But my point is, you're not going to blow out teams consistently by 20 points, especially not really in this NBA. Like, that's just crazy to think. So basketball being the game of runs that it is, I'm more focused on, how do you handle it when the other team makes the run? And the Raptors consistently, for all the people complaining about how do we keep blowing leads, how about we focus more on how are they handling the other team's run? Will they take it, absorb it, and then Kawhi just does his thing, and then the lead is pushed back up again, right? And it didn't look good. I'll be honest. It didn't look good at the end of the first half because Kawhi, Kawhi, as I said, 15-3 run, Kawhi at 13 in the second quarter. It got up to a big lead. And then the last two minutes, the lineup was DeLon, Danny Green, OG, Pascal, and Serge. The Cavs go on a run. And instead of it being, I think it was 17, it ended up being a seven-point lead at halftime for the Raps. So I understand the cause for concern that people might have. I do get it. I do understand. I just don't think it's as big of a problem as we think it is. And I also think it's a league-wide trend. It's not just the Raptors blowing leads. I don't think that's a thing. I think if we if we sat down and focused in on what other teams were doing, you would see a lot of the same trends in terms of 
having big leads, other teams cut it to like 10 or whatever, but really not worried about that. I'm more focused on what you do after the run. Uh, another comment here on Instagram. So far, we faced a lot of 500 or less teams. The next 14 games or so will be challenging. We got to be ready defensively. Um, the key point there is being ready defensively, and that's really what's impressive to me the most. Like I know Kawhi, I knew Kawhi Leonard was a great player. I was maybe more surprised of how good he was offensively, right? Like he's a lot better offensively than I thought he was. I didn't realize his game was that polished or as polished as it is. It seems like he can get his shot off anytime he wants, and then it's a matter of make or miss. Like he can get a good shot in clear airspace whenever he wants defensively what this guy does is just stupid and I, i'm mad at myself for not bringing this up enough in the golden state game but defensively when Kawhi leonard is locking down on kevin durant and i know kevin durant has 51 points but when Kawhi leonard picks his crossover in crunch time as if he was you know a college kid guarding a high schooler that's crazy a play like that is as important, if not more important, than you knocking down a shot in crunch time. That defensive stop, and Kawhi does that consistently. Again, pay attention to the little things that happen at the end of these games, right? Nick Nurse is trying to, say, to, to put Kawhi Leonard on whoever's hot in that game. So if you go back to prior games and just see what happens down the stretch, you've seen Kawhi guard everyone from Kyrie Irving to Kevin Durant. That's crazy. And he's coming up with stops against these guys, right? That's incredible. And so you watch him do that against Kevin Durant. And then tonight, as the Cavs are making a little bit of a run, Seti Osman's hitting a couple shots, what happens? Kawhi Leonard, defensive play, steal, defensive rotation, block. Like, it's just ridiculous to watch. And I know that those aren't the plays that make it on the Instagram. Those aren't the plays that make it into even the highlight reels that we see, you know, the highlight shows and all that. But those defensive plays are just as important, if not more important, than the, the game winning shots or the game icing shots. Those defensive stops are so deflating to the other team and also bigs up your team, hypes up your team, gives your team that confidence that when we need to make a stop, we can get that stop regardless of whoever it's on the other side of the court. And I think that is amazing. That's really big. And again, that's not what you're going to see on Instagram. It's not what you're going to see in the highlights. But those plays are just as important. Those defensive plays, Kawhi getting a stop, getting a key steal in crunch time to stop another team's run. And it's not even just that tonight, right? Because he was doing that, but then also getting buckets on the other side. It's... It's amazing to watch a player at Kawhi Leonard's level night in and night out for the Toronto Raptors. Wearing, wearing the jersey of your hometown team, it's a pleasure to watch that on a nightly basis because that is what a two-way player does. And, you know, again, it's not, it's not about headlines. It's not flashy, but he gets the job done. And it's so crazy to watch on a nightly basis. Uh, let's see, what else here? We got some other comments. Uh... Someone talking about what happened against Clay. Sorry, he didn't score all 51 on Kawhi. No, he definitely did not. Um, but I just think it's, it's one of those things, someone also saying that Kawhi is so efficient, right? Again, so a night after he put up, what did he put up against uh, Golden State? Kawhi had a massive game against Golden State, right? What did, he, what did he finish with against Golden State? 41? No, I think he got to like 39. 38, sorry. Kawhi Leonard, so after a night after putting up such a crazy stat line against the Golden State Warriors, he comes back in this game and finishes with 34 points, 9 rebounds, but 34 points on 11 of 21 shooting. 11 of 21 shooting, people. It's just, it's disgusting. It's disgusting what Kawhi Leonard is doing on both ends of the floor. And again, the 9 rebounds. I keep I know I'm bigging up like basketball nerd stuff here, but like nine rebounds, guys. Nine rebounds. Kawhi Leonard, I'm just saying how important the the part of defense that doesn't get talked about 
is picking up the rebounds. And Kawhi Leonard not only is guarding his, his, his position, but again, tonight, eight defensive rebounds. It's incredible. And I am baffled by the fact, because I think back to when the trade was made, and I think I can't believe there were people that were questioning this deal. And I know that there were a lot of things surrounding it. People were saying that there's no way he was going to play in Toronto. There's no way he was going to resign. Why would we give up DeRozan? when he could be hurt, all of these things. But I stood firm then, and it's the same thing now. If you're Masai Ujiri, you have to take that chance. And the reason why you have to take that chance if you're Masai Ujiri is because this, what we're seeing from Kawhi Leonard, and it's not even the top tier or the top level of what we're seeing yet. He's still not at a hundo P yet, right? But what we're seeing from Kawhi Leonard, there's what? less than a handful of dudes in the NBA that can give you what Kawhi Leonard gives you on a nightly basis in the NBA. That's why you make that deal. The way that he can affect the game, night in, night out, he can look around and say, okay, we don't have Kyle tonight. I got to take charge. I got to be aggressive. I got to make sure that I make plays. Uh, Let's go to more comments here. Someone else in the chat says, been listening all season. Shout out. I appreciate that. Uh, Big up. Side notes, I agree. F Vince, man quit on us. I agree. I feel the same way. I respect what he did, but ultimately I cannot forgive the way he went out. Okay, that's a comment going back a couple pods ago, but I appreciate that. Also, too, I think the key off that is noticing the difference in players. Again, Kawhi Leonard isn't flashy. Kawhi Leonard isn't, you know, doing the fancy dunks or he's not splashing all the threes, although his three-point shot is still kind of wet. But... It's not what you see on headlines. It's not what you see on Instagram, you know, house of highlights or whatever. But every night he's getting busy on both ends of the floor. And it's amazing to watch. Amazing to watch. Uh, Someone else says, feel good about training for Kawhi now. Yeah, I mean, as long as this keeps going, right, and as long as he stays healthy and all those other qualifiers, this Raptors team is a problem. And I keep saying it's not so much about, yes, they have good players. Yes, they have guys that could do all these other things. But defensively, when they decide, okay, we need to like end your run or we need to make a defensive stop at the end of the game, they do that. And it's jam done. And we saw a bit of that again tonight. Kawhi Leonard, obviously the MVP of this game for the Toronto Raptors. Just the way that he, even when the Cavs made the other run again, it was these mini runs by Kawhi Leonard, right? The Cavs, because the Raptors bench really did struggle in this game again. And I don't know if this is going to be a, a constant thing until things really settle down. But in terms of a unit, and maybe the issue so much is the fact that, for the most part, Fred, DeLon, and Pascal, and uh, Pirtle, right? Those guys all played together. No one was, like, DeLon was out for a bit. Fred was out for a bit at the end of the season and in the playoffs, but for the most part, all of those guys played together, and there was a continuity between them, right? They knew when their minutes were coming. Everything was kind of the same. The Raptors, on the whole, didn't really deal with that many injuries, right? Like, DeMar played the whole year. Kyle was healthy for the whole year. So, for the most part, the rotation was in was intact, right? These guys were playing together. They were playing with the same guys night in, night out. That continuity hasn't been there yet, and I think that's what's been affecting the bench and making the bench so inconsistent. 24 games into the season, so there's still a lot of time to work through that and get all those things sorted out, but the bench did struggle tonight. The bench really did struggle tonight. But again, it's a, it's a road game, right? And sometimes that happens on the road. We talk about it. The difference between starting players and bench players and stars and all-stars and superstars, like going up all those levels, the difference between those things, the biggest difference is consistency, right? Your superstars are able to do it night in, night out. Your, your all-stars are able to do it night in, night out. That's why they're all-stars, right? Your bench guys, they might give you some good minutes one night, and the other night, they struggle. That's why they're bench guys. I know sometimes that sounds way too simplistic, but that's just a real talk. And if you look at what the Raptors did tonight, a guy like Danny Green with Kyle Lowry out of the lineup, he steps up. He goes six for nine, three for five from three, 
seven rebounds, just affecting the game again in different ways. 15 points for Danny Green. Knowing that with Kyle Lowry not in the game and not scoring, you're going to need scoring from other places. Danny Green is there to step up. It's interesting. I was having a talk with my boy C. Brown at work yesterday, and he was telling me that he thinks Danny Green's, Danny Green's like his favorite player on the Raps this year. It's hard to argue. Danny Green is just a solid guy. He always seems to come up to with those like little tip-ins or those like, you know, whenever the Raptors are stalling, somehow there's like a big rebound and tip-in or he drives and, and gets an offensive rebound or just happens to be cutting at the right time to get a loose ball. Like he makes all those little plays, right? And it's going to be great over this year and hopefully they re-sign him. But it's going to be in- interesting for guys like OG and Pascal to watch vets like Danny Green and Kawhi, guys who have been through it night in, night out, guys who, you know, take tough games like this when you're on the road and shots aren't really falling and they know how to get the job done, right? And figure out, okay, let's get to the basket. Let's make layups. Let's not force threes if my shot's not going. Let me, you know, run in and try to grab some extra rebounds so I can affect the game in another way if my shot's not falling. Having these young guys learn from those two guys with championship pedigree, it's going to be so valuable for these Raptors kids, whether or not Danny Green and Kawhi are still here next year. The learning from those guys that, you know, OG will get, that Pascal will get, Freddie. You're just watching two pros do it night in and night out in big moments. And 15 points from Danny Green tonight, 15 points from Freddie. Shouts to Freddie. He, he played a solid game. Serge gave you 10 and 6. JV, I feel like, has been struggling the past few games. I don't know what's up with that, but, I mean, hey. Sometimes you just need your best players to be your best players. Uh, more comments here from the chat. Uh, let's see. The people that question it, the trade, uh, this person says, people that questioned it are part-time fans. Real Hoop fans knew this team is on another level. And we still have a higher ceiling still. I agree. To me, the scary part is Kawhi is not healthy. He's, he, he's still, sorry, he's healthy. And I think we saw that with how he came out against Golden State. He's healthy. He can get buckets whenever he wants. He took that other gear when he saw Kevin Durant. He's healthy. But can he do it consistently? And we're starting to see that. That's back-to-back games of Kawhi just like, looking unstoppable like the top five or top three player that we were told that he was when the trade was made so the biggest part though in terms of the ceiling of this team is just going to be experience and getting used to playing with each other and the other thing too that i think was cool and a benefit of kyle lowry not playing in this game was it forced the raptors to run more of their offense and i talked about the fact that Kai, or uh, Kawhi hasn't really like he still doesn't know the plays like 1000% yet you know what I mean he still looks kind of off there's sometimes where it looks like half the courts running the plays and Kawhi's just kind of standing on the other side I feel like tonight we saw him more involved in that dribble handoff offense right and that was one of the keys in terms of having Kyle not play it forces the team to run those plays it forces Kawhi to have to run those plays because Kyle's not there to break it down and just, you know, freestyle for lack of a better term. Now, freestyle within the offense, but freestyle in that little two-man game with Serge or whatever, fighting Danny Green for the three. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Not having Kyle Lowry force them to run the offense more, and maybe that'll help Kawhi in the long run get more comfortable in the full offense of the team. Uh, Kawhi and Danny have been two have been the two finals. Their experience and lost the finals in one one. Uh, what does this say? Let's see. Hypothetically speaking, Kawhi stays. Lots of pieces in free agency. Who do you target? I don't know. This offseason is going to be super weird, and there's so many hypotheticals there. I I don't know. That's a tough one to dive into, just because who knows what's happening in Golden State? Like there's there's so much to play out there. Uh, But, hey, I like the thought process of hopefully Kawhi stays. (laughs) Anything that leads to that, it's cool. Uh, Let's see. I see a comment here. Oh, it's Bellamo. 
I think it was a huge game for our guards when our centers have had a very quiet night. Totally true. Raptors guards did lead the way. Again, Danny Green with a massive night. Freddie did. I think Freddie did a, a pretty good job in filling in for Kyle. Um, he did a solid job. Not mad there. The bench didn't really give them much. You know, CJ Miles continues to struggle, and I don't know. I don't know. Maybe at certain point, do we just accept maybe CJ is just struggling this season, and that's just what it is. We notice in a couple games lately, we've seen the trend of CJ not getting second half minutes. Now, he did tonight, but overall, when the games get tighter, when the games get more important, and you extend the minutes of Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi with a team high 37 tonight, will that mean less minutes for CJ Miles? Also, remember, Norman Powell's going to be coming back at some time soon. So, how does that affect CJ's minutes? I don't know. But the guards, it's going to be super interesting to see how that all plays out. But tonight, great minutes from the guards. I know these games, sometimes we think, we keep thinking that, you know, these games against the Cavs don't matter. Or these games against the Hawks don't matter. Uh, Who was the other team they played recently that wasn't really that good at all? It was the Hawks. It was the Cavs. It was uh, someone else I'm forgetting. But my point, though, my greater point is, these games do matter because it puts you in different situations to learn how to adjust. You know, who knows what happens? You're going to have to rest Kyle Lowry a little more as the season progresses. So you got to get used to those situations, right? Kawhi, if Kyle's out, you might need more from Kawhi Leonard on a nightly basis. So it's good to see him like fully take charge and fully lead the team, right? As someone points out here, it's experience and reps. That's what you get from these games. Raptors win this game by 11. You take that dub over the Cavs, right? Was it closer than you probably wanted? Eh, maybe, but that doesn't matter. That part doesn't matter. It's about the overall win, and I guess the biggest thing is as people keep bringing up the Raptors blowing leads and is this actually a problem, my response to that is to just chill, relax. I don't think it's a problem at all, especially when you consider that this team is still getting used to each other. It's 24 games into the season, right? You brought in two major pieces, two starters into your rotation. You also added Siakam into your starting lineup and are now rotating in JV and Serge on a nightly basis. It's going to take a while for all those pieces to fit into place and to build chemistry. So what that means is if your starters are in flux, then obviously your bench is in flux. And when are you normally blowing leads? It's when your bench is on the floor. So until you can you can get a solid bench rotation, I'm not going to read too much into the Raptors blowing leads. And then as I said earlier, this whole narrative about how the NBA is played now, it's faster, teams are shooting threes. That's more what it is. It's not about the Raptors blowing leads. Nothing to worry about there, Raptors fans. Just enjoy the win. As Jack said, and I've been saying from the start of the season, enjoy this season. Enjoy it. Don't get too far down the line thinking about, well, what happens if Kawhi leaves or what happens if Kawhi stays? Enjoy night after night saying that you get to watch one of the top three players in the NBA wear your team's jersey on a nightly basis and go head-to-head against the other top players in the league and win games on both ends of the floor. Enjoy that. Enjoy having legitimately the best team in the league because here's the thing, right? Yes, I know people have been saying, oh, well, year after year, we were saying for the past five years, this is the best team in Raptors history, right? Every year they've been saying that. Every year it's been, oh, well, the Raptors have the best team in the East. Look at their record. Even last year, they were tops in the East. But I'm going to ask you guys, how many people actually believe that? Like deep down, remove the fan aspect out of it and be serious, be honest. This year is the first time you can legitimately look at this team and say that they are favorites in the Eastern Conference. So enjoy that. Enjoy that. That's my biggest message to Raptors fans. Enjoy this season. Enjoy the fact that you have the best team in the NBA. You are 20 and 4. 20 and 4. Enjoy that. The Bucks lost today to the Knicks, right? Uh Golden State lost today 
to the Pistons. Like, the Raptors just continue to win. The Raptors continue to ride high. Enjoy this, Raptors fans. That's my message. Again, Raptors win. Raptors win. Raptors win. Another big game for your Toronto Raptors. And you know what? Enjoy Kawhi Leonard. Also enjoy Danny Green. But one thing I want to know, maybe we can answer this in the comments. Who is your favorite Raptor player right now? Because I think in losing DeMar DeRozan, why it hurt so many Raptors fans was because he was so clearly their favorite player on the team. So now with DeMar gone, I'm going to ask you Raptors fans, and I'll read some of these comments for the next game, but we'll start the discussion in the comment section. Who is your favorite guy on the team right now? Who's your favorite player? Did it just easily shift over to Kyle? Is it Pascal as we continue to watch his glow up? Is it Kawhi? Or is it like my man C. Brown and is it Danny Green? I don't know. Either way, Raptors win 106-95. They win their eighth game in a row. They improve to 10-2 and on the road. Improve to an NBA best 20-4. and This is a wrap it up on Blast Raps Post Game Show. My name is Sheldon Alexander, and as always, you can find this podcast after each and every Toronto Raptors game live on Twitter, at Shell Alexander. You can follow me there. You can follow me on Instagram, at Sheldon Alexander. And of course, as always, you don't listen to this live, because hey, we're doing this live right now. It's Saturday night. It's 11 o'clock, Saturday night. Probably rushed out after the game, heading to the club, you know, went out, did something. Maybe... You want to listen to this Sunday morning as you recover from your epic Saturday night. Well, luckily for you, it becomes a podcast. Again, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play under On Blast Podcast. Shout out to everybody there listening to the show. Shout out to all the people on the YouTube page. And as we continue to grow this and build this into something bigger, I want to continue to extend this conversation. So I really mean that. Send me your comments all the time. I'll read them on the show because I want to hear from you, Raptors fans. We are not the silent. We're not silent anymore. We have the best team in the league. We have the best team in the country of Canada. And I know that as people in this country continue to ignore that, let's build something before they just jump on the bandwagon when the playoffs come around, right? Or when they just jump on the bandwagon because the Raps are playing Golden State. No, no, no. It's bigger than that, right? What the Raptors are doing right now is bigger than that, and it deserves the attention. And regardless of not of who's giving us the attention, we're going to make ourselves heard because the We the North movement is real. So again, my name is Sheldon Alexander, and as I close each and every episode, I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this. This is the Wrap It Up On Blast Raps Post Game Show, as always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time, see ya. Boom, blast.